Today's episode of Learn New Animation, I'm going to learn you how to use weapons. More specifically, a sword. Now, I got this request here, and I figured, hey, that's not a bad idea, let's give it a shot. So, let's get right to it. First of all, I'll start off again by posting up what this is going to look like at the end, so you can see whether or not you're just wasting your time, or if this is something you already know. But, basically today, a summary of what we're going to do, is I'm going to create a short animation of me swinging a sword. I'm going to show you how I go about utilizing and using a weapon, and how you can use a weapon as well. Okay. So I just have a nice flat background here. Let's start off. Create our pretty looking stick figure. I'm gonna go into 300% zoom. Seems to be comfortable for me. Today we're using Flash 8. You can notice things are a little bit different colored than before. No real reason to be honest. I'm kind of just deciding to use Flash 8 today. It just sounded, it sounded right. You know what I mean? It just sounded good. Also, it's something you else you may notice is it looks like my flash is actually pixelated. You see how like rough my stick figure looks? It's not actually that rough. What I have actually done is I went to I believe it's what is it? Uh, maybe it's modified. There's a command here. Is it view preview mode fast. So. I sent, if you go to view, preview mode, preview mode, and set it to fast, it basically strips all the fat off of your um, flash while you're using it, so it keeps the run runtime really low, or the RAM use is really low. And why I like that is, one, it makes things run smoother, but also I kind of like seeing to the, to the pixel kind of what my stick figure is going to look like. It makes it a little bit easier for me um, to redraw frames and things like that. But overall, if you're working on a big project, I highly suggest going to view preview mode and fast, at least in Flash 8 for sure. Anyways, so I'm gonna start off with my stick figure here. I'm gonna put him in kind of like a, a sword wielding pose. Um, and I'm just gonna create a really simple stick uh, sword and I'll show you how I do this. So I'm actually just gonna create it using just the line tool. Uh, this right here, as dumb as that looks, could be a sword all in itself. Um, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do Basically, I'm just going to go through, color these in, basic colors here, let's put like a, an actual gray, right? And voila, I have a sword. Now, if I want to make it a little bit more, I don't know, snazzy, a little more sword-like, I can do things like make this a larger blade, like I'll take this, double it, place it back together, and then reconnect these and kind of make it a little bit more swordy esque shape but for our purposes today i'm going to keep it nice and simple just something like this will do maybe extend the handle out a little bit more nothing too snazzy because it's not entirely about the creation of the weapon that i want to go over but really the movements that we're going to be doing um, anyways, so we have our basic looking sword here. I'm going to make it a graphic just to save time. And I'm going to place, I hit Q for, for free transform. And I'm going to place the orientation marker right around where you would hold the sword. And this is going to act as a marker for us to understand where we want our stick figure to hold the weapon. Um... Snapping is on, and I hate snapping, and I'm trying, I'm just, like, my brain just died. Uh, snapping. I hate snapping. So I'm turning the snapping off, which basically it's like, when you're trying to do some precise splash, it's like, oh, you mean here? So, it's just annoying for me. So, I'm gonna put this sword right here. And I'm going to do two motions. One where he's gonna first lift the sword up and the second where he's actually going to swing the sword. So we'll start with this. 
Um, one thing we can do that I like to do is first, looks like this is all in the same layer. Let's make this on the sword on a separate layer. Is <clears throat> I will draw out the keyframes for what I want to do. So the first thing I'm doing here is he's gonna lean back with the sword, right? Oops. So I'm gonna draw him doing just that. Beginning the anticipation for his swing. Something along those lines. And then the actual swing itself. This is a very exaggerated swing. You know what, that back leg's probably gonna go back. And this is a good method for those, uh, you know, super intricate combos that you see. Sometimes when people, uh, like myself, will draw out the keyframes first so I can kind of get the idea down. And that's very helpful when you're dealing with multiple different tricky uh, moves. Remember, keep it simple, stupid. So I'm basically putting down my thought process first, and then I'll go back and animate it. So the first thing you want to do, whenever you start some sort of anticipation, I like to add in a little bit of um, wiggle before the movement. So I want to move his head back to there, right? But as humans, we don't just, when we make a decision, we don't just, boom, make 90 degree angle turns, you know? And by that, I mean we don't just immediately decide and stop what we're doing. So even him just breathing and sitting still right here, it's actually going to probably make him lean forward just a little bit because he's making the decision to move. Lean forward just a little bit first before he decides to lean back. Now, I'm just going to do the torso and legs to start. Going back to keeping, keeping it simple stupid. Just going to do the torso to start. And even for right here, because now I know that I've done my leaning forward, now I want the head to travel back to that position. So I'm literally just going to animate just the head to establish the spacing I want. Getting to that pose. See how I did that? It's got a nice smooth arc. Um, I kind of did the spacing similar to something like this. For the easing, easing meaning, you know, I could have these same frames, let's just for imagination purposes imagine that these are all evenly spaced, it's going to create the same movement throughout, it's not going to be, um, you know, starting slow, ending fast, or vice versa, we're starting slow and ending, or starting fairly fast and ending slower, so, now that we have the spacing set up, I'm going to extend my onion skin out so I can see where I'm going with this. And I'm going to go through and add in my in-betweens. So you see how breaking it down makes my job increasingly easier each time I do it. Because it's like, okay, well animating the head's not hard. Oh, well, now that the head's animated, it's not hard to animate the body. Because I've already had, I don't have to think about how I want to do my spacing anymore. Now, I'm just going to go through and animate the, my torso and legs. The only thing I can get a little confusing with this method, for me, is uh, the onion skinning. Because you have to constantly change your onion skinning around um, to kind of flex with how you're going to animate the next section. Because, like, I see I'm getting lost as, a little bit here as to which foot I'm actually placing on in this, this foot here. And that's okay. That's what period and comma comes in handy to understand. Um which frame you're dealing with when you're having multiple onion skins like this. Now it's towards the end. I could probably just push this to one or two skins. And it's okay that that front foot's sliding a little bit because the back foot is actually where he's putting his weight. Okay, so now we have that initial part done. Now we go back, add in the arms. Well, let's just ignore the sword for now, because we don't- we're not even gonna worry about animating that yet. 
So that we're gonna go like this with our arms to bring the sword up to show some weight. I'm going to kind of add a bend to my upper arm because that's the elbow that's gonna be pulling it upwards. And we're just gonna imagine the sword for now. And now we're gonna do the same process again. Start with the head. And we'll look at the onion skin here. So we came to a pretty good stop. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna arc down to that head. Okay. Whoops! To add in the frame for doing that. I may or may not include one more frame here. Because you want to have that uh, strength and power into the swipe, so I'm going to leave the greatest gap at the next keyframe here. And usually how I follow that up is I will bounce him back up the opposite direction he came from after the swing. So he'll kind of be like, boom, he swings, and then he's going to start recoiling himself after that swing. Does that make sense? Maybe, probably, maybe not. Okay. Ugh. You know what? This may not actually come out as pretty as I want, just because, you know, I haven't had enough water today. And I find if I drink my couple cups of coffee and then I drink any water and it's this wiggly mess and my brush strokes suffer because of it but anyways we're gonna go through start animating our swing now his pivot foot's here so this foot's gonna try and stay still and this foot's gonna move backwards with the motion notice we have a good arch of our back here that's gonna continue through to our arms and we have opposing line of action. That's what this is called, is when you have one keyframe like this and your action keyframe is like the opposite direction, that's called your line of action. That's what's gonna show our force. So arching the back a little more. And when we do the arms, we're gonna add a delay to the arms in the line of action and that will give some more uh, oomph behind the swing. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what it's all about. Like his line of action is gonna start to bend this way and the arms are gonna lag behind a little bit to give weight to the sword and give more snap to the movement. So like right here, I'm gonna start bending the torso in an impossible way. Because the one thing that um, you have to keep in mind when animating, we are in the business of an illusion. We are creating something that's not actually there. So even when creating realistic movements, you do unrealistic things like give this weird turn to your spine that you can't actually humanly do. But I may actually remove this frame just to add even more oomph to the sword, so we'll see. But now we go back, add our arms in. Still just imagining the sword. See how the arms are a little bit delayed? And then boom, swing. And then we recoil the swing. Okay, now we'll go back and add the sword. Now, I'm gonna show you this animation too at a point where it's gonna look pretty ugly. And that's where I go back to the story of we're in the business of illusion. Because I'm gonna show you what we do with uh, motion trails that help sell our movement. Because we're creating a movement where um, the sword is traveling a path which we didn't actually draw a frame for, which creates this weird um, situation. Now, here, let me see how this looks with the sword behind. We might actually do the sword behind like that. Yeah, we'll do this because it looks like he's holding it better. So I moved the layer down. So I'm just keeping in mind where I have my white dot, my orientation point, to get an idea of where the sword is positioned. Now notice for the, so the last part here, I'm kind of like keeping the sword fairly straight with the arms, except for this last frame right here. The arms are starting to go back this way and I'm still having the sword go back that way. That adds a little bit more strength to your swing. Because now you're changing direction, right? Boom, and the swing. 
And the sword's going to do the same thing the body did. It's going to overextend and then pop back. And ease out of that motion as well. Now, I can't remember if this will allow me to show you guys my frame. Whoa, that's funky. Oh, it looks like you actually can see my frames. That's nice. Somewhat. You can somewhat see my frames. Let me see if I can make this better for you. Um, wow, I have a lot of windows open in the back. Okay, so I want you guys to kind of see the frames here as well as our character. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit. There we go. Oh, there's my chibi off to the right. Okay, so now I'm going to add some framing to this before we go ahead and add in the trails. Uh, so like I said, it's going to look pretty ugly, but the starting motion here, we're going to uh, double double or triple frame. We'll start with a triple frame because it's a slow movement. He starts slow uh, into the movement. These can be single. Now he's starting to slow down. Triples, double, boom. And now he's really slowing down. Oops, this is 12, 12 FPS. I meant to start at 24. I think my defaults on this are messed up. All right, not too shabby. Okay, but you can see what I mean by it looking ugly. There's something lacking there. Uh, and because we added so much strength to our swing, I'll maximize again. Um, we added so much strength to our string, our swing, by creating this gap here. But the viewer's eyes lose those uh, frames. So there's a couple things we can do. To help sell our illusion, we can add in what is called trails, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. But we're going to go over it anyways. So what we want to do, first of all, is I want my trail to match the color of my sword. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, grab the same color. I'm going to copy the color code, open up the linear um, color mixer thing there. And I'm going to paste in my color code, drop those off, and drag one end of it down to 0%. And that's basically gonna create um, this trail fade that we want. Now, my next thing I'm doing is I have a layer underneath everything here, and I'm gonna decide where I want my trails. So I think what I can actually do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a trail there. So I like to kind of proceed my big trail motion with a small one. And we have uh, this big motion here that we're gonna do. So I'll show you what I'm first gonna do is I start off by making a triangle behind my previous sword. And I kind of want to start at, you kind of want to do the, the base of the sword, the tip of the sword, and then you run one line all the way through so that it creates a triangle. And I position it as though I'm making the imaginary motion that the sword would have traveled. You can imagine that there was a sword here in between these two frames, it would travel something along the lines like that, right? And then I'm gonna go back, I hit K, and I'm gonna fill in um, the trail. Now, if you notice, it filled it as one solid color. That's because over here in the options, it's got the lock fill. I'm gonna untick that. And then I'm just, just going to then play with my linear gradient to get it to how I want to, and then double click on the lines and remove it. So now I have this nice little trail. Um, and, and you could bend this too to help um, create the shape you want. Sometimes having a little bit of curve there helps uh, show the speed even faster. And now we have the big actual gap that we're drawing the, the thing for. Now, the, what's unique about this is we have a lot of space traveled, right? And what you'll find is, is if you try to just match the end of your triangle back over here, it's gonna cross over, right? We don't want that because then you can't fill it appropriately. So what you wanna do first is add in your curve for your swing, then move it. And I'm starting it roughly where you think the sword could have been as it went. And then I'm gonna drag my curve as if this was continuing. You know, you see how I, you can almost even match it to the beginning of the previous, or the end of the previous swing. And this will create the illusion that you actually made that swing with the sword. But I'm gonna move it back a little bit like this. Create the curve that I want. See how that works? Now, now the eyes can understand the movement that was made because you helped sell the illusion. Same thing coming back. I'm gonna do a little trail first beforehand into the main move. 
because it kind of gets the eye prepared. The, the viewer understands that, oh, hey, he's about to swing the sword. I can get that. And anything you can do to help sell that illusion a little bit better is going to help the overall image. So once again, I'm going to go through. I'm just kind of trying to get rid of these extra lines that make it easier to grab my triangle, but sometimes it's a pain in the butt. Um, I'm going to create this little curve here. the swing itself, moving to this next frame. Once again, starting at the base of the handle, ending at the end of the tip of the sword, adding in my curve first, seeing if I can match over there, sometimes move the curve over, and would you look at that? Make that curve there, and it's exaggerated. It's extremely exaggerated. The sword didn't actually travel that great of a distance, but that's fine. Now, let's see what it looks like with our trails added in. Now, as you can see, we have given the viewer a little bit more information in between those two frames, but still allowed us to create the kind of strength and powerful swing that we wanted. Um, some other things that you can do to help emphasize your movement a little bit further is uh, I will, well, for instance, I'm gonna make this a movie clip on the actual keyframe of the swing, and I'm gonna blur it. But I'm only going to blur one axis. Make sure that this is unchicked. Oh, sorry, you cannot see that. Let me move you up. Woo! Sorry. One moment. My flash is... This is actually not my flash. You're being good to me, Flash. But I want you guys to see this setting. So, um, make sure that this is unticked here. And basically what that does is it makes sure that whenever you... Uh, play with either of these settings, that it'll equally match the settings on the other side, meaning like if I move this one, it's going to move the other side. We just want the Y value to go up, because the motion is up and down for this swing. Not up and down and left and right, or left or right. So I'm going to blur just the Y axis, All right? And the other thing I can do, now that I included the background to this as well, I will actually move him down so that when the swing occurs the background which has now disappeared because I put it in a movie clip on accident <laughs> let's go ahead and add that back in whoopsie mistakes mistakes have been made wow okay well I'm gonna do this super snazzy move where I just delete all that <laughs> and Oh my gosh. There we go. Uh, and I'll match it back to the previous line somewhat. Make sure it's just holding my feet how it needs to. Okay, that works. So, we have our ground back. Uh, and for this frame where we have the blur, I'm going to remove it because we have that included in. And I'm gonna move it down a little bit and that's gonna create a little bit of a screen shake. Coming back, I'm gonna have it bounce up a little bit before returning back to its original space, original spot. And as you can see, all of those little things coming together really pulls through a fairly nice sword swing and trail. So today, on this episode of Learn Your Animation, you learned how to create and use weapons. In this instance, a sword, trails, uh, even a little bit of uh, anticipation and line of action where you have, you know, your motion, your keyframes set up like this, and then they end in the opposing direction, creating that snap that we want that we include our sword in. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, and I will see you next time.